welcome to my kitchen. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make this delicious eggnog cake. It's eggnog, a cake mix, a few ingredients, and boom, you have the best cake ever. So if you're having friends over last minute around the holidays, or maybe you just had some eggnog left over from your party before, and you're like, what am I going to do with the rest of this? This is the perfect recipe for you, and it's so fast, so simple, anybody can make it. Let me show you how. We are going to start out with just one box of yellow cake mix. It doesn't really matter the brand, whatever you happen to have at your local store. And then you're going to need one box of vanilla pudding. It doesn't matter that it's sugar free. I just happen to have the one that I happen to have in my pantry. I actually keep it around because I add it into my chocolate chip cookies or the ones my daughter likes. And then you're going to obviously need some eggnog. And we are all going to be using three-fourths of a cup of eggnog. And then we are going to need three-fourths of a cup of some vegetable oil or canola oil, whatever you happen to have around. And then we're going to need four eggs. This cake is super good and it comes together super fast. So it's one of the things that I love in case someone calls you and be like, I'm coming over to bring you something and you want to have something out for them to snack on. And you're gonna need some cinnamon or some pumpkin pie spice. If you don't happen to have Trader Joe's and don't happen to have pumpkin pie spice around your house, I wanna show you that it is primarily cinnamon. So if you use cinnamon, you're not gonna taste a huge amount of difference. You're gonna actually need a half of a teaspoon of it. You could also use a half of a teaspoon of nutmeg if you like that flavor. It's just kind of a stronger flavor, but if you love nutmeg, that would also really taste good in this cake. Once it's all mixed up, you're going to need either a bunt pan or like a flute pan, which is basically the one without all the decorations, just in a circle. And you need to make sure that you spray it or follow directions that come with your bunt pan. Some of them don't say to spray. Some do. I like to spray it with either the pan spray or the one with the flour. Some people also say spraying it and then lightly dusting it with the flour. And then you just cross your fingers, say a prayer when you dump it out. And this is, I want you to know, a little bit on the decadent side for cake. I realize that. And we're eating all the treats right now, but don't worry. In January, I'm coming out with some heart healthy, lower calorie meals. So make sure you come back in January and you're ready to get trim again. But until then, let's eat all the fun foods. Then you're just going to pour your cake mixture into your bunt pan or into your tube pan, whatever you happen to have. It is super thick, you guys. So you're going to have to like get it out and kind of even it out a little before you place it in the oven. You're going to put it into a 350 oven for about 40 minutes. It could take up to 45. Every oven is so different. I just use a skewer, poke it in and make sure it comes out clean and then you know you're done. After it cools completely, you are going to put it onto your cake platter or plate, whatever you're going to serve it on. On mine, I lightly dusted it with some confectioner's sugar. Some people also use a mix of confectioner's sugar, and if you are want to make it a little bit different, you could always use a little bit of rum mixed with your confectioner's sugar and do a little glaze on top. Whatever you decide to put on top is going to taste so good. I hope you guys give us a try. Make sure you give me a follow or subscribe. I hope you guys like this and share it out with your friends. And I will see you really soon.